Can you 3D print a picture? Find out here on today's video from Quick Tech Tutorials. All right, so today's video, we're gonna learn how we can actually 3D print a picture, or specifically, it's called a lithophane. And what a lithophane is, is any sort of image that's etched or molded into a material. It could be porcelain, it could be plastic. In this case, it's going to be the material we use in our 3D printers. Um, and the image will show up when it's illuminated from behind. So uh, we're going to go through the process, how we can actually create that, what it looks like, um, and some of the options in which how you can display it. All right, so I'm using Cura as my slicer program. This is what I'm going to actually import my picture into, change my settings, and then send it over to my 3D printer. Uh, first thing you need to know is making sure that you have a good quality picture. So what's going to define a good quality picture? In this case, you want something that's going to have good contrast. So when you 3D print your picture, right, essentially it's going to come out like a black and white photo or it's going to give the illusion kind of like a black and white photo. So you want to make sure you have enough highs and lows in there so we can differentiate and actually see the image. So one image that I have, just I did a quick Google search. Uh, looked up my favorite car, uh, Stingray Corvette, and I saw this picture here, which to me uh, was really good for this demonstration. So we have great contrast between the color of the car, the tires, the road it's on, the grass, the trees in the background, and even the sky. So we have some good levels uh, of contrast here. So I just simply downloaded this picture right off of Google. Uh, not my picture. Wish it was my car, but uh, it is not. So just downloaded this picture. All right. Um, once I get into Cura, before I actually import that picture, I am going to change a couple settings. So I'm going to go into here and the few things you need to be aware of to make sure this works. Uh, one, we're going to change the layer height. So we want the layer height to actually be 0.1 millimeters. Um, we want it this fine because that's what's actually going to help give us uh, a detailed quality image. If the layers are too thick, um, you may not get as much detail as you would like. Um, so I have an initial layer height of 0.2 millimeters, um, and then my layer height for the rest is set to 0.1. All right, so that's the first step. Set your layer height to 0.1 millimeters. Um, next step, if we go to infill, infill has to be 100%. So this is going to be a completely solid print. Um, we want that to be completely solid. If not, your infill pattern will actually show up uh, through the image, which would obviously uh, make it not look good. So infill 100% and I make my infill pattern lines. Um, again, infill layer thickness as well, 0.1 millimeters. All right, so we have that. Um, last thing that I like to do um, is go to build plate adhesion. And I usually put a brim on there, even though it's, it's a flat surface that's gonna print, occasionally we all know uh, when you print something, sometimes the corners can curl up. So I like to have a brim on there just to make sure that it lays nice and flat while it is printing. All right, so biggest thing again, just layer height, 0.1 millimeters, uh, infill 100%, um, and I usually put a brim on there just to make sure that it's not going to peel off while it's printing. All right, so I have my print settings there. Now let's import this picture. So same way you would import an STL file, um, I'm going to import a JPEG. So I have uh, my Corvette picture. Now, the height, these settings, we're going to go through these. The height, um, overall, I'm going to say, uh, I found a good size is about three millimeters. So could you go a little less? Sure. Could you go a little bit more? Sure. But I found three millimeters is a pretty good range. Um, and notice something that says base millimeters. I usually make that 0.4 millimeters. So the total height of my object or the total thickness, I should say, of my image is going to be 3.4 millimeters. And the way to look at it is like this. Um, the first couple layers, so up to 0.4 millimeters thick, that is going to be completely 100% solid, the entire size of your picture. After there is where it starts to actually print up the individual layers of the image. Um, and the more layers you have, you can think of almost different shades of gray. Um, so each layer will get progressively darker and darker. So if you have less layers, you're going to have less contrast. If you have more layers, you're going to have more contrast. Um, you know, within a reasonable range, I found that three millimeters as my height with a base of 0.4 was a pretty good 
uh, area to get enough contrast on my images. Uh, width and depth, this is the size of your picture. Um, so I'm going to leave this just as the size uh, it is right now. Uh, we want darker is higher. So the way a lithophane works is there's going to be light shining from behind. So the thinner something is, uh, more light will come through, making it look lighter. And the thicker parts, uh, less light will shine through, making it look darker. So we want darker is higher. Um, if you have it the other way around, you're actually going to get kind of like a negative of the image. So we want darker is higher. And I actually turned smoothing off. Um, you know, I found that sometimes with smoothing turned on, it kind of rounded over the edges or the different contrasting areas, and it almost made the picture look blurry. So I turned smoothing all the way off. All right. And then I'm going to hit OK. And you will see that now my Corvette picture is here. So let's zoom in, take a look. So you can kind of make out that it's the picture. Again, I'll pull that up. Here was my Corvette picture here. And now you could see it um, on my build plate. And if we rotate around and even kind of look at the side, you could start to see, right, the different layers. Now, right now, it doesn't look like much, but you can see that this is what the surface of my lithophane is going to uh, look like. And again, it doesn't look like much, but uh, when the light shines through, it should replicate almost like a black and white image of my Corvette picture. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to slice it. And I'm going to just show you the preview so you can see what the layers would look like. Um, we'll get an estimate of time, and then we're going to go print this out. All right, so just finished slicing. So just to show you roughly how long this should take. Um, if you know a little bit about 3D printing, you know it can be time-consuming. So these pictures, and again, this isn't a huge one. It's going to take about eight and a half hours to print. Um, so one downside to this, it does take a little bit. Um, doesn't use too much filament, 22 grams, based on the settings that I have. So... Uh, not too bad there, but I'm going to go up to preview and let's rotate this around a little bit and let's take a look at some of the layers just to kind of show you what's going to happen while it's printing and understand uh, how this works. So first couple layers again should be completely solid, which they are. And you'll notice once we start to get a few layers in, it's starting to build you know, some of the points. So these areas here that are kind of in red and green, these are going to be the lightest points in my picture. So imagine each layer is another shade darker. All right. So as I go up, you can see a little more, a little more, a uh, little more is being created. You start to see the kind of the top and the frame of the vehicle. You can see the sky um, is, is starting to uh, take shape here. And obviously as it continues, you get more and more detail uh, ultimately until you're done and you have your image. All right, so let's go get this to print. And uh, once it's done, we'll kind of take a look at it and see uh, see how we can get it to light up. All right, so our lithophane just came off the printer. So this is what it looks like, right? You can kind of make out what the image is. Again, from the uh, early portion of the video, we know I downloaded a picture of a Corvette. So this is what it looks like. All right, we'll check out just from side view and you can see all the different heights and layers in there. Um, but right now, doesn't look like anything much. So the true way to uh, really appreciate this is to illuminate this uh, uh, picture from behind. So you could do that in a couple different options. Uh, what I actually did too is one, I designed a frame that this could pop in. So this uh, just kind of sits in, held in by friction, can kind of clip into place. Um, and I have this little opening up top that you could hang it on a hook and possibly place it on a window and let natural light shine through. So maybe... Uh, anywhere in your house or an office or something like that, you could have a picture illuminated from the natural light. Um, another option is I made my own little light box. So I 3D printed same size frame, but I made it solid and I actually have a battery pack and some LEDs behind it. So this one I made in black. Um, again, just kind of fits inside, but this is where we could truly appreciate the picture. So I'm going to turn my desk lamp off. I'm going to turn the LEDs on and... Let's take a look. There we go. So now the LED is shining from behind, right? Are really kind of highlighting the highs and the lows. So we could clearly make out this is a car. You could see the wheels. You could get a really nice difference between the sky and the trees, the road. Um, and again, this is why I turn off smoothing is you could see every little detail. You could see the bumps in the road. You could see just the different textures of the trees, um, really getting a full appreciation for that picture. So it's a simple process, uh, easy way to create um, a picture, but something really, really cool that you could do with your 3D printer. Uh, and again, I think this offers a lot of 
uh, possible options in terms of gifts, in terms of something at work that you can create. Uh, again, whether you're a teacher or you're a student looking for something fun to do, you could be as creative as you want with this. All right. So this is how you create a 3D printed picture or a lithophane. Um, again, the whole process, pretty straightforward, pretty simple. If you have any questions, please be sure to comment below and I'll help you guys out as much as I can.